Thanks for tuning in again, everybody. We're back with your favorite podcast, Lucas, Tigers, and Bronze. Oh, my. Luca Nation. I'm really digging in, into the bag for uh, for today's play, but I think you guys are going to like it because it's uh, – it's a combination of something I think that's pretty artistic or kind of creative in nature. I think you're going to like the look of this card. Plus, I think it's a potential moneymaker. But before we get into that, I want to welcome you guys back to uh, another episode of Lucas, Tigers, and Bronzo Mai, where you get to chat it up with Cage, Lawyer, and myself, Mr. Andrew Goldberg. So it's good to have you guys back. Any new listeners that we have, whether that's from the 137 p.m. article uh star stock or any of the other things that we've been discussing and putting on your guys radar welcome 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 we appreciate your attention please dm us if you have any questions concerns any feedback we'd love to hear from all of you guys cage what's what's going on how you feeling Yo. today, big guy oh man you, you all bundled feeling... up for the snowstorm listen it's pretty crazy it is definitely pretty crazy what we got going on over here uh we're supposed to be getting something like 14 to 18 inches of snow which you know couldn't we dodge one bullet in 2020 let me tell you man um you know if we have now snowmageddon to, to end the year here now it just moves murder hornets down on the list of things that happened in 2020 <laughs> down into uh, the forgotten realm and any other year murder hornets would have been the biggest thing and i'm not talking about Devonte graham and Lamelo ball that was an actual thing that nobody even remembers because 2020 has just been that bad but yeah bundled up you know i was able to you know i was able to get out do some shopping and uh you know stock the stock the house up there's a really funny uh comedian the milk and the bread I'm going to go, I got to go get the milk and the bread. It really is true though. When, when people hear like a snow forecast, they go insane. They go to the supermarket. There's like all the milk and the bread is bought and you know, there's like a run on, run on the stores. So I was able to get what I need and batten down the hatches. Good. And, Doritos. Know, if we're, if we're in here. Soda. Doritos. Doritos soda, man. I got, I got more soda than I know what to do with, which is good. Cause you know, I need my soda. Otherwise without soda, there's probably no episodes. I'm just going to, I'm going to throw that one out there. You know, without air, you can't breathe. Without soda, I can't do these episodes. You know, I mean, that's... You hear that, Cope? That's the deal. You hear that? We are that's looking it. for a sponsor for the show, and you guys have an amazing, amazing opportunity to get in on the ground floor because uh, we're making waves here in the hobby. So, Coke, Warren Buffett, if you're listening, send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's <laughs> it, man. That is it. I will take All that right. sponsorship to the bank. Well, let me tell it. you something. Gordon Hayward just broke his hand. Did you see that? Yeah, broke, go for it. broke one of the fingers on his hand. Are you excited for this Hornet no, season? Dude, really? It's less than a week away. Yeah, he just broke his broke a finger on his hand. I am. I am excited. So is he? Is he going to be out for a long time or what? Uh, no, just right? reported, but I imagine he's going to be out for six weeks, at least the beginning of the season, which I think is actually no, super interesting. Really? Yeah. Yep. 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 Oh, so you heard it here first Holy from cow. Shams, from Shams Goldberg. Yep, Shams Goldberg right here. Um, what else? I, I was, I, I'll get into a little bit something interesting. Tomorrow, the Raiders play the Chargers, Cage. You're aware of this, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. What do you think the spread is on that game? I am. Oh, I have think- no idea. I, if I, where is it? Is it, is it, in, in, is Vegas. it in Vegas? Mm-hmm. I mean, without looking, I would say four. Just as the first blush for the game, I'd say four. That's right. Um, just because Minus the three. on a downhill and because the Chargers. All right. So I was close. Um, you know, the Raiders have really. This is what they did last year, too. They started off really nice. And then they ended the season, I think, one in five or something like that, you know? Um, and what good, what good is it? I mean, I guess they're still in the playoff hunt. But what good is it to just miss the playoffs or make the playoffs and just get unceremoniously bounced in the first round? You almost want them to have a better draft pick. I sound like a Jet fan. It's horrible. Yeah, that's not how, that's <laughs> not how it works. But I mean, I'll tell you, I'm looking at that line, and I just don't see how you don't take the Raiders minus three. Uh, the Chargers barely, barely scraped out a win against the Falcons. But at the same time, I mean, I would love to see the Fal- the Chargers win more. Here's why, right? The, Here's why, right? You know, I just don't see it. it it's not done this way, right? The fo- and. NFL's not done this way, right? Where it's like A is greater than B. 
and B is greater than C. So A is greater than C, right? You remember those math things, right? So yep. it's not like that in the NFL, but it really get right? this type of thing, right? The, but think about it. So the last two weeks, the Raiders got shellacked by the Falcons two weeks ago. And then last week, the Chargers beat the Falcons. So yep. if the Falcons are better than the Raiders and the Chargers are better than the Falcons, then it would make sense that the Chargers are better than the Raiders. But it's just not like that in the NFL. But that's why the spread is as close as it is, I think. You just have to look at the games that were played in the last two weeks. The Raiders got trounced by the Falcons and the Chargers handled them. So I hear you. Know, you. I think that I think line that's... couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> I think that line should be minus six and a half. And I think there's a lot of value on the Raiders. So unless we have more small talk, Cage, unless you have anything that's top of yeah, mind, I'd love I to get talk. right into my play. Well, let's see, top of mind. I'm excited for a lot of sports. And what are we, one week, right? Less than one week away from real NBA games. I am curious to see, and you guys DM us on this, you know, you know, put, put some comments when we, when we post about tonight's episode. What do you think is going to happen with the NBA season really starting? Do you think that people will stop paying as much attention to football? Do you think football stays, you know, where our hobby is, is focused? Um, to the fact that there's really not that many uh, card releases out yet, does that, does that hurt the NBA? You know, here we are, it's Christmas, and what do we have out for this season's basketball? Prism draft? I mean, is there anything coming out anytime soon? You know, I mean, does, does the fact that the season is starting and there's no big release for people to, you know, to invest in this year's draft class and these rookies, does that, does that hurt, help? Um, I'd love to hear about that. I'd love to hear anybody out there who's, you know, heavy into football cards but is, is planning on selling some of them to move into basketball. Um, and, uh, you know, it, this is fun. This is the exciting time of the year. You know, I mean, this just it's, – it's, it's, it's meaningful football and it's basketball – and what that means is you're going to start to have sports every day, which I like. Because in that first part of the football season, what do you have? You just have weekend games and nothing going on at night. So That's right. And bowl games this year are going to be pretty interesting too. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. It's an, uh, another, another, weird, another weird sports time. Um, I will say – yeah, So take. go ahead. What's your pick? Go ahead, I'll please. get into my take. pick one, in one second, but I have a take. I would say right now is when you go through that box of cards that you have in your basement and look for some Kyle guys from some bowl bowl cards and for some Horton Tucker cards because I don't know if you guys have seen, those cards have exploded in the last few weeks. And I'll tell you, in the beginning of the year, if you said you could have made a few hundred bucks on Kyle Guy and it'd be a reality, <laughs> I think you would be... On your hands and knees, you'd say, hey, take all my Kyle Guy cards for two, 300 bucks. Now's that opportunity. I would be, I would really, really ask yourself the question is, is these, are these cards really worth holding it into, into the regular season? Uh, so that's just something I've noticed. I'm going to ask my mom, because she's still home, to go through my box of cards and see if I have any Kyle Guy, Bowl Bowl, Tucker Horton Tucker um, cards. Okay. Maybe I'll do some giveaways. <laughs> I still can't get Tucker, his name right. Tucker Horton Tucker. Okay. <laughs> it's funny. Talon. Talon. Like Jay. Talon. Talon Horton. Not Talon, like some folks want to call him. Like, do, do the chickens have large talons? Now, if you tell me what movie that's from, dude, I'll be very, ex- very excited. Uh... Do the chickens have large talons? <laughs> All right. If you can't guess it, somebody from our audience is going to smack you upside the head because this is one of the funniest movies ever. Um, Age. Do the chickens have large talons? Yes. Who what is are your top talent? five? Like a, chicken, like a bird talons. A top five. Give what? me your top five athletes of all time. Athletes, Ooh. purely athletes. Well, can I just say like people who are good at their sport? Because like I don't think that that like each sport is as athletic as the other. You know what I mean? Like I think NBA players mm-hmm. are very athletic, right? Tiger Woods is at. I don't. I don't think Jack Nicholas was an athletic person. You know, I don't think he's running the 40 yard dash in any kind of a fancy time, but he's you know, one of the greatest golfers of all time. Arnold Palmer doesn't, you know, strike out at me as somebody who's quote unquote athletic, but you know, he's, he's, you know, one of the, one of the greats of his particular game, same kind of thing. Right. I mean, there are Babe Ruth doesn't look athletic, but he's on the Mount Rushmore of, 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 of athletes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. I mean, I understand what you're saying. I don't know why you're making an easy question difficult, so I'll get into it. I'll say LeBron. <laughs> I'll say Herschel Walker. I'll say Megan. Okay, Trump. there's athletes. And maybe Bo, Bo Jackson. Jackson. Bo Jackson. Yeah. And so that's my play today. Thing. 
Yep. Oh, and- dude, the one I name is your play. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, Deion Sanders would be an athlete, right? I mean, they're yeah. Kyler Murray. The, especially Kyler Murray is not. Yeah, I'm not the, the, not putting a Kyler Murray two sports. in the same category, dude. Anybody, anybody who could get drafted and play two sports is, is one hell of an athlete. Dave Winfield, by the way, if you guys don't even know who that is, do me a favor, Google Dave Winfield. I know he's not like you know the greatest player to ever play any sport, but Winfield, if if I'm not mistaken, Winfield was drafted to play in three sports. So he played for the Yankees. I think he came up with the Padres. I think 1974 is his rookie with the Padres, I believe. But Winfield, I believe, he might have been drafted in four leagues because the ABA was at the time, but he was drafted. I might have been by the Philadelphia Eagles, maybe, for some reason, are sticking out of my brain. But I'm pretty sure that he had the ability to play in the NFL, uh, the ABA, NBA, and baseball. He chose baseball. So there are some athletes out there. But go ahead, go into Bo Jackson. I don't want to No, no, it. fine. Derail you it. know what? Let's pivot from Bo Jackson. Let's buy Rick Barry. Oh, you want to take Dave Barry? Winfield? He's... <laughs> buy Dave Winfield? <laughs> but, so most people Dude, know... Dude, don't go for the... Bo. I love Bo. I'm a Raider fan, man. Bo's the best. So most people Bo. know That's his... That's a great play. Most people know his 1990s scorecard where he has like his football pads on, the baseball bat behind his neck, and he's flexing. Yep. I'm not the type of guy to collect shirtless men, so that's not my style. So I've decided to go with the 1987 Dunruss Raider what? rookie card. And I would say this is how I would play it. So I think the PSA 10 is the move, uh, especially for such an old card. But I'll tell you, there is something to be said about the SGC black slab around with the black border of this card. So if you guys will see this card, you'll pull this up on eBay. Maybe we'll do a clip. It's a beautiful card, and it's got this really cool black border with, like, a yellow and grim, green kind of trim on it. And I'm looking at some SGC graded Bo Jackson 1987 cards, and they look amazing. Just from, like, a purely aesthetic perspective, I think this is such a cool card. And this card in an SGC 10 sold just a month ago for under 100 bucks. So we're talking about a legend. One of the most athletic guys of all time was – not just a two-sport athlete, he was one of the best two-sport athletes. And now, by the way, Kyler Murray is on the come up. Who will he be compared to? I don't know. Maybe Bo Jackson, maybe not. But I think Bo Jackson is a legend. And I think you could have his cards, which is a, what, 33-year card in a PSA 10 for just over 150 bucks, And you could get it in the SGC 10 for under 100 bucks, Or you can buy them raw. And send half of your cards to PSA, half to SGC. But for me, I would buy this card already graded because of how cheap high grade uh, high graded cards are. For example, a PSA nine in this card sold for under thirty five bucks. I think it's a really hmm. interesting play. I love the look of the card, so I I just bought a, a PSA ten this morning, so you guys know. So I'm completely transparent. I would not be upset if I never sold this card. I got it for one seventy five. I think it's a beautiful card. I, I like Bo Jackson. I love the way he runs. So this is a PC item, but I still think it has cultural significance. Or as my co-host once said, I think he's cardboard relevant. He definitely is. He was a cover of Beckett, that picture, that score one. That was, that was uh, you know, that's, that's a cool thing. But I love that 87 Dunruss card. I love it. That's an amazing card. It's a cool card. And I even like the SGC play for aesthetics. You know, with the black border around the black border. That's pretty cool. Thank you. I'll be it's here all day. It's an interesting play. It's a very interesting play. All right. So here's my play, guys. It's um, – let me ask you. Who's the next uh, Talon Horton Tucker? Who's the next Bull Bull? Who's the next one? Well if, I knew, well, if I knew that, I'd probably be a billionaire by now, right, Cage? I would just buy all of the penny cards. Who's the next Talon Horton Tucker? Well, you know what? You've answered my question for me. I don't know the answer, and you don't know the answer. But huh, there are different ways of doing what we do, right? And we compare this stuff, this investing, we compare this stuff to, to you know, building a portfolio, right? And a well-balanced portfolio has different risk appetite in it, and different asset groups, just as you like to talk about. And even tell me, hey, Matt, you know, don't, uh, don't go crazy with your uh, – you know, with just your, your, your cards, buy some Bitcoin and try to explain to me what Bitcoin is. And I tell you, if, if I can't use it in a soda machine, it's not the kind of coin I want. So, um, you know, yeah, buy stock, buy this. If you have a stock portfolio, 
you want to mix in more aggressive investment styles. You want to mix in some more um, steady investment styles, blue chips, prospects, you name it. But you know what? There should be room for a real, you know, depending on what your risk appetite is, a real aggressive one. You know, a, a I don't want to call them penny stocks, but almost a penny stock. You know what I mean? And and that's the the the, the portion of your portfolio that you're willing to risk. You know, an all or nothing, home run hitter type of thing, right? And maybe you spread it out over the five stocks. This was like the vaccine stocks in the beginning of the year. You know what I mean? Who knows which one was going to hit? Who know which one was going to be the one that actually like yep. made the COVID vaccine? The ones that didn't, or the ones that killed people during their vaccine trials? Those were the ones Jeez. that made the most money. But if but if one of your five, what? Geez, what? You don't think that happens? So, um, <laughs> oh, I'm just it's too sobering. So, but I, I have to I have to spell this out, right? I have to spell out, you know. Our, our audience doesn't to subscribe to our podcast. Our audience doesn't subscribe to our podcast for our uh, medical expertise and analysis. So I, I'll reserve my uh, my judgment and opinion on the vaccines. I don't own any All vaccines. Right. Well, well, Moderna, if you would have bought, was doing so well. But it, the, the point. My dad bought it. Stocks. My He's dad bought it. Make the space. Well, then you do own it. You do own it through genetics. But so here, um, what's my point? My point is, right, that there are a bunch of ways to play this stuff. But whatever team you're a fan of, maybe there's a guy on that team who you've watched a couple of preseason games or you watched at the end of last year, and you're like, that guy could have some highlights. And it's funny, you talk about Gordon Haywood breaking his finger. I'm sure it's a pinky, and I'm sure he'll be fine, and I'm sure he'll tape it up and play, and you know he'll be ready for the regular season game. But those kind of things happen, and people are given an opportunity. The Hornets, you know, here's an example. Miles Bridges, right? Miles Bridges, a great play, right? And I've heard people talk about him, and he's a high flyer. He plays above the rim. He's going to be highlights. He's got LaMelo Ball in there. And, um, you know, there's going to be some, some alley-oops and he's going to have an opportunity to run the court and be rewarded as a big man for running and dunking the ball. Maybe he's going to put up good numbers. So here's what I want you to look for. I want you to look on eBay at listings that are like this. 2018-19 Panini Prism basketball rookies pick and complete your set. $2. $1. Quantity. All right. And I want you to pick a couple of guys. I want you to pick a guy from your team. For the Hornets, I'll tell you it's Miles Bridges. Maybe you're a Toronto guy, and you believe that this year at some point, Uta Watanabe, the first Japanese-born player, it could be OG, but Uta Watanabe. This is this guy's name, Uta Watanabe. First Japanese-born to get an NCAA uh, Division I basketball scholarship. And he, I, I think he signed with Memphis last year, not drafted, but he's on Toronto this year. I mean, that type of international exposure in that market, if he actually gets to play, it's worth you buying a couple of his cards at a dollar each. Because if he has that bull, bull moment, maybe they're 20 bucks, the same way Mr. Horton Tucker's cards are. And I want you to, to, to look for specific people on this who have an opportunity to play and play some minutes. Because what you'll find is that you can buy people's cards for a dollar, for $2. You can buy Kevin Herter. For three dollars, you can go out there and buy Mobamba if you think that's who you know is going to be. Miles Bridges is two dollars, three dollars. Um, Mikael Bridges, if you want, you don't have to just be. I'm just reading you guys on a list that I found right now. It could be 2019. It could be 2017, guys. Um, pick five guys. Pick five guys. They're two or three dollars each, and buy five or ten. Of I each. knew you no, were going to bring this back and wrap it back to fast food food. I knew you'd do it. <laughs> Why did I? Oh, you I don't get you didn't get you don't get the joke. Five guys, burgers and fries. You don't have them in New York. Yeah, I, I, I we do, and I like the French fries. Um, I do. Um, but I guess the point that I'm trying to make here is, if you had a hundred dollars to invest, you can go and buy one player for a hundred dollars, and hope that that player outperforms. And you'll probably be okay there. I'm not telling you not to do that. Um, but. For hundred dollars, you can go out and buy five base prism rookies of five different guys, <laughs> maybe more, maybe six different guys, and you're able to spread your your picks around. Where if one of them pays off, one of them, you're getting all your money back, if not making money on it. That doesn't have to be just I love this it. year; it could be your last year's plays. So, I mean, my my pick for today was Miles Bridges. 
Um, that was before your Gordon Hayward thing. And if Hayward's actually out for any amount of time, he's going to get some, you know, some real run. Yep. Um, but it, really, it could be it could be almost anyone. I, I only pick him because I watch the Hornets games. I see him playing. And, you know, if you have if you've been watching the, uh, the highlights of LaMelo Ball that the league is trying to put out there, what you'll see is at the, the back end of a lot of those those nice passes is Miles Bridges with his head above yep. the rim, dunking the ball in, right? So, you know, that's why I pick him. But it could be anybody that you're a fan of, guys, that you've watched. If you're a Celtics fan, maybe you buy into Romeo Lankford, or maybe you buy into Grant Williams. You know, maybe you're a Ty Jerome guy after being traded, and you can buy his cuts for a dollar, right? A yep. dollar. You know, maybe new a uh, change of scenery is the way to go with him. Um, Let me make you know, sure I understand correctly, because it took me a little Please. bit to understand. So essentially what you're saying, and, and if you think about it, a few weeks ago, I brought you guys the Kobe Mutual Fund play. Yep. In a similar sort, let's say you're like, okay, I have a $1,000 portfolio, 900 of it is already deployed. I'm going to use 100 bucks before NBA season starts, and I'm going to sprinkle that yep. money around into different penny stocks. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know which one of That's them right. necessarily will pop. But I know if I buy five Kyle Guy, I'm just using that as an example, five um, Seku Demboye. I don't even know if he's still priced accordingly, but let's just use that as an example. Well, he's the more money, five but bo- yes. Use like Daniel, five you, bo- use Daniel Gafford, right? Daniel five Gafford Daniel is $2 Gafford. a card, and you, you, can get, you can get 10 of them for 20 bucks of his prison base rookie. I'm looking at it right now on eBay. 20 bucks. He's one of your five guys. You can buy $2. How much is a Mikhail Bridges prison approximately? couple bucks also people like Mikel Bridges so he's more than these guys but well he was good man he played at Michigan State he was always a fl- high flyer he was really highly regard- regarded out of um, high school as well so I, I see why they would uh, I think that Charlotte team is going to come together really nice this year Cage I think you're in for a really good season that's Miles that's Miles Bridges different Bridges but Mikel Bridges um, yeah you can still get him under 10 bucks Looks like I love it. So that's the play. I told you guys we're getting in so, our bag today. We're getting in our bag. You never heard that before? No. Like a sleeping bag? You never heard like – no, like when, when Kyrie's, you know, he's one-on-one with the defender and so he's in his bag. You know, he could go left, he could go right, he could pull up, he could fade, he could get to the rim, he could finish with either hand. He's in his bag. No, I've heard in the bag means like it's it's a done deal. Like that's in the bag. We have it in the bag. I've heard you know you, you know you put a bag on. I got a bag on means you're drunk. Um, but I've never heard it utilized in the way that you've phrased it. Yes, sir. Um, He's in his bag. He's in his bag. I've I heard people call you a D it. bag, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, it is what it is, man. I mean, you know, you 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 got you got to love it. You're loving life. No, so he, here's the deal, guys. So I mean, I I do like to give you specifics. I do like uh, the guys I'm naming. I like. The, Daniel Gafford. I mean, he's a big man in Chicago. He, he played pretty well last year. Um, Chicago's got a lot of people. And he for $2 a card, he's one where I could see a point this year where he goes on and scores a, a few points in a couple games in a row. And those cards go for $10 each instead of two. Same thing with Miles Bridges for 2 or $3. Uh, those are two of the guys that I would sprinkle in. It's a fun way of playing. You know, if you're going to invest all this money in cards anyway, and you're going to be buying Trey and Luca or, or whatever it may be, you know, half of what makes our hobby fun is picking those deep sleepers, right? In fantasy, you know, finding a guy who you can use on your fantasy lineup in the last round that wasn't your kicker, you know, and say, look what I was able to do. You know, I was able to, you know, I was able to pick this guy. This is, you know, this is a guy I'm riding with. And, and it, while it may sound like a weird play, every single year, somebody steps forward who you didn't expect to step forward. Somebody takes a step and you have a shot that maybe you're finding one of those good. Maybe it is Daniel Gafford. Maybe it is Miles Bridges. There was somebody out there who was buying Devontae Graham cards for less than a dollar. I always go back to him, right? But he was a second round pick. Somebody out there was buying THT cards before LeBron invited him over for Taco Tuesday. You know, there are cards on eBay right now. I can't tell you which one they are. Just as you said in the beginning of this whole thing, if I, if I knew who it was, I'd be a billionaire. But there's somebody right now you can buy for a dollar today mm-hmm. or $2 today who will be 10 or $15 at some point in the season because of injury, because of opportunity, because they will outperform. So you can only get that. Well, I'm going to say – Go ahead. 
Yeah. Well, I'm going to say Got he's it. no longer a $2 card. Maybe in the beginning of 2020, he was a $2 card. Now he's probably priced at a $25 card. But the person I'm investing in is Mr. Cage Lawyer. I think oh. right now you can get in on the oh, – not the ground floor anymore. There's people that know. He's got a little bit of a fan club at this point. You should see the DMs this guy gets. But yeah. I would people still want, buy into They still Cage want my Lawyer. Chansey. They still want my Chansey. That's why people <laughs> – we're trying to get my PSA 10 chancy. That's that's what it is. Nah, but you're, listen, kind, of, I, you're kind of built like a chancy, aren't you? I am. I am. I 100 percent am. Like a big flabby. Yeah, I love it. It's a great. That is the best compliment I've gotten in a very long time. I'm kind of built like chancy. <laughs> I mean, serious. I guess you you could have went with a fat Pikachu. I guess you could have went with the Pikachu chunk, as Ian likes to call him. Um, but I'll take it. I'll take that. I'm I'm chancy. Thank you. Love it. Nicest thing I've heard all of that. Dude, come on. Luca Nation, we told you guys you're going to get a really special episode today. And that's that's the, bless, that's the blessing you guys get hopping on here. You know, we bring an episode every day where people are just like you guys. We, we're in different moods. Some days we're more serious. Some days we're more playful. We hope you guys enjoy it. We care a lot about you. And please well, don't stop messaging us. Please don't stop commenting. Yeah. Dude, I got to give a shout out to our producer. Jordan, if you're listening... You're doing an amazing job, man. And the people love the content. Uh, and we're going to keep it coming. Those video clips, the memes. Um, we appreciate you what you're doing for us. The audience loves it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll tell you who I want to thank. I want to thank everybody who commented and shared that, uh, that eBay video. And, um, you know, I got a bunch of messages saying, like, I'm an eBay hater. And that's not true. Um, and I love the, the different opinions uh, that came out of it. And, you know, really, I think I surprised um, Andrew with the answer when he's like, what's your biggest fear? Because you can go anywhere with that, right? What's your biggest fear about the hobby? I'm sure he wasn't expecting me to say that it was eBay. Um, you know, I have a million different things that I, you know, I, I worry about with the hobby, with all the money and time and stuff that we have invested in. Um, I love some of those takes. and I love the fact that it was shared so many hundreds of times by everybody. So, you know, keep that up. We love di- we love the dialogue. We love the, the conversation, um, and we love everybody's viewpoint. Right? This is not supposed to be an yeah. echo chamber, right? It's not supposed to be yeah. everybody saying the same thing. We're not all supposed to be agreeing. But what's cool about this, what the hobby is, we can all come together and uh, agree that the hobby is awesome, even if we don't agree that Zion's going to be awesome, or even if you come down on the different side of the aisle on the Trey versus Luca debate. We'll all come back in and have some fun with it, and buy our cards, right. and, you know, and move move the hobby forward. So, you know, well, let's let's that, quickly guys. contextualize that. That wasn't let's, actually let's, so that that came from Coffee with Cage. So, to our new listeners, we do this every Friday. We have a segment where our audience submits questions, and we ask them on the air with who asked it, um, and Cage gives his answer. And I also sometimes jump in and give my two cents. But that was a question from the audience that Cage answered, that we made a clip of, that people then commented and responded to. And that's what we really want to do. It, it's a pseudo conversation of sorts, if you really think about it. And yep. the benefit there isn't that we or Cage think that he's right about everything. It's the dialogue. It's the conversation. It's the nuance. Um, so please keep those comments coming. Is that, yeah. is that the right interpretation? A hundred percent. And the better part of that is, you know, thank you to you guys for throwing those questions out there because you never know it might become a video that we post that gets shared by hundreds and thousands of people <laughs> so you know that that That's whole right. content is generated from you guys asking us questions um and and just so you, know, you guys love- know I, I take those episodes very seriously so that's why you don't see me smiling there and that's why i'm playing on my phone i wanted to set the record <laughs> straight there in that video uh, <laughs> he's, he was he was setting up his his nighttime activity is what was going on there. He he just got a text from uh, from a friend. Let's just call her that. And he Trey. was not listening to my he was not listening to my answer at all. He was over there texting. But it is what it is. It's okay. I, I'm a big boy. I could I could take it. I actually love Lamine James sends me uh, tray nudes every once in a while, so they distract <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> that guy that if you're not following that account follow that account guys and listen we you know i, I have to say this you, you touched on it in explaining the coffee with cage episode we have new listeners every day and i, I mean i want to take a, a you know a moment to say welcome to luca nation uh, to say thank you to whoever it was that introduced you to us um you know we really think we're building a great community here um that literally every day i log on and i'm like i can't believe this many people are listening to us it's great 
I thank you. Um, and for those of you who have not heard us talk about this before, we have, you know, we have Instagram groups. Um, if you want to join one, you want to get in there with the, you know, other members of Luca Nation, other listeners, we talk about everything, um, you know, different hobby, different, you know, the sports, who's buying what, who's selling what, you know, what do you guys think of, of, of this guy? Where's Mahomes fall and the MVP? I mean, you name it, it is kind of nothing off, off limits there. So it allows you a direct access to us because we're in those groups um, as well as other members of the community. So if you're interested in joining one of those, just send us a message and uh, we'll get you in one. Let me layer one more thing. I know we're going back and forth. This is fun. This is like, we're just it's like ping pong. Uh, we, I get a lot of DMs from people asking, uh, <laughs> I get a lot of DMs from people asking, is it too late to start a podcast? You know, I want to create content. Uh, I have a voice. I, I want to share, but is it too late? I feel like there's so many podcasts. I'll tell you guys something. It's not too late. It's never too late. And if you have a passion to start creating content about the hobby, there's never been a time better than now. So please use this as permission, as an endorsement, as a belief from Cage, myself, the Luca community, that if you're out there thinking, hey, I want to start a podcast, I want to talk sports cards, do it, do it, do it, do it. And if you have any questions and need help with the setup aspect of it, Mm -hmm. DM me, I will help you out. I love this stuff and I want to help more creators get into the hobby. And we'll do one further. If you do that and you DM us that you're thinking about doing it and Andrew helps you and you actually do one and you get it off the ground, and you actually have a podcast going. We don't care how many listeners you have. If you do it, you got the content out there, let us know what it is. We'll listen to you. We'll help you out with it. And if enough of you guys do it, listening to us, we'll have you on. We'll do, we'll uh, do, a, thought, we'll do, we'll do an episode. Would you hop on their years. episode? I'll hop on there also, but how about this? We'll have them on. Well, we can bring five other people on to talk about their podcast. Why the hell not? Do a whole episode of five Luca Nation listeners who want to talk. Come on, on. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about your podcast and how you, how it's different. You know, what kind of area of, of, of our pod. hobby? Yeah, Gang right, pod is my dream. <laughs> Listen, we could, uh, you know, the point that that you are making, and I think that you know we're 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 doubling down on here is, you know, we want to support what you're doing too, and and if there are people out there who are are um who are looking to get a podcast going let us know if you're out there and you have a breaking community that you want to get off the ground let us know that too you know we'll give you a shout out we'll come listen i love breaking as much as the next guy you know you got, you got a facebook group out there that you want us to you know know about and you want us to you know talk about let us know um you know people message us with that stuff all the time and you know anything to move the hobby forward we're all about that look at that I hopped on today and Cage was serious. He was mean mugging me. He had a lot on his mind. And now we're ending this convo. He's smiling cheek to cheek. There you guys have it, Luca Nation. Have an amazing, amazing evening. Thank you for spending some time with us on another episode of the Luca's Tigers and Bronze Oh My podcast. Um, Do us a favor and like, subscribe. Ah, You know what? Don't just like and subscribe. Everybody does that. If you like us, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your enemies, tell everybody. And uh, we hope you got something from spending some time with us today, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.